Welcome! In our last video, we talked about the traditional pronuclear injection-based system of producing transgenic animals, specifically mice. In that video, which you can find right here, we go over all of the basics needed to understand the concepts discussed in this video. Today, we are going to talk about another commonly used method of producing transgenic mice, called piggyback. This method uses transposons to integrate a single copy of the transgene into animals, which leads to higher, more consistent expression of those genes. Before we do a deep dive into piggyback, let's explore a comparison between these two different methods of creating transgenic animals. The traditional pronuclear injection leads to inconsistent levels of gene expression, and while this may be good for some kinds of experiments, it's not ideal for others. The second method uses transposons, which lead to consistently high levels of gene expression. This data shows the gene expression in the offspring using each method. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned that piggyback integrates a single copy of the transgene into the genome. In a traditional pronuclear injection, a process of gene stacking occurs as the foreign DNA integrates into the target gene. Contrary to the common belief that these tandem repeats increase the expression of a gene, at some loci this tandem integration may silence the expression of the gene itself. This process is the source of great variability shown in the graph above. Before we go any further, let's break down what a transposon is and how it works. A transposon is a DNA segment which is able to move from one area on a gene to another. It is for this reason that transposons are often referred to as jumping genes. The process by which a transposon moves from one area to another is known as transposition. There are two different classes of transposons which undergo transposition in distinctly different ways. Type 1 transposons are known as retrotransposons. These retrotransposons convert themselves into RNA using transcription and then back into DNA using reverse transcription. Once converted back into DNA, they insert themselves into the new genome. You can compare this method to copying and pasting on a computer. Alternatively, piggyback is a DNA transposon. In this kind of transposition, DNA moves directly from one area of the gene to another in the same way that one might cut and paste text. Now we will talk about the anatomy of the piggyback transposon. All DNA transposons use transposase enzymes to excise DNA from the host genome. The piggyback transposon is no different. Transposase enzymes recognize inverted terminal repeat sequences which are on either side of the target DNA. These short 13 base pair long sequences are reverse complements of each other. Now that you have an idea of how transposons work and what the piggyback transposon looks like, let's talk about the process for completing a piggyback transgenic mouse project. The procedure for completing a piggyback transgenic mouse is very similar to that of creating a regular transgenic mouse. We talked about the steps involved in that in our last video. The only difference between the two is how the vector is developed and the way that it is injected. In traditional pronuclear injection, you inject a single transgenic construct. However, in a piggyback transgenic, a co-injection is performed containing both the piggyback transposon and the transposase enzymes which will recognize and cut the ITR sequences on the piggyback. Generally, however, a vector that expresses the transposase enzyme through its DNA is used instead because the enzyme alone is very costly. The only other difference between these two processes occurs inside of the cell after the piggyback transposon plasmid with the transgene has been injected into the male pronucleus. After the injection of the piggyback transposons into the male pronucleus, transposase enzymes find their way to the terminal repeat sequences on the gene. Next, they will dimerize the transposon, forming a complex called a transpososome. In the following steps, the transposase enzymes will excise the DNA from the plasmid. 
The transpososome, which has been freed from its resting place, is now guided through the nucleus towards certain areas of the genome to TTAA sites. These sites are special because they associate with open chromatin. Chromatin structure plays a key role in regulating gene expression by allowing DNA accessibility to transcriptional machinery and transcriptional factors. Areas of open chromatin are areas which have high rates of transcription. Thus, integration of transgenes into these spots will lead to high expression of the genes. Because the gene was cut at the ITRs, only a single copy will integrate into the genome per TTAA site. This difference leads to a more consistent expression of the gene. While the integration into TTAA sites associated with open chromatin leads to higher expression. With a start to finish time of just 2-5 to five months, piggyback transgenic mice are great options for creating transgenic mice with high expression and consistent results. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more animated informative content about genetically modified animals. Use code WATCHT when you make your inquiry with Saijin for a 15% discount on any of our transgenic services for a limited time only. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.